Okay, so look at this project done by NVRDD. This is an image of the base 3D model, and these are all variations that were generated using AI, each one slightly different than the other. Some influence materiality, others change spatial design ideas, and others just certain parts of the design. Now, NVRDD is probably one of the most interesting architectural offices in the Star Architect spectrum, and this is because since the 90s, they've been not only designing projects that are different and to be honest kind of crazy but because they're also constantly investigating and researching on the side from projects centered on roofs to city planning and even furniture they're committed to a research-based design practice. MVDV is a firm that does design through research not by testing a million things or by making a nice shape it's always by uh, creating a hypothesis testing it figuring out if we agree with it do we like it do we not only we through design research then get to a final conclusion. This is Kaas Esbach an architect and project leader at MVRDV Kaas has been involved in numerous projects and is constantly emphasizing how the office's success is centered around one main ingredient, embracing change and innovation. M4DV's tradition is to embrace uh, this growth and embrace this ever change. So it's the, our tradition is to change <laughs> and to accept these things and to go uh, full force into them. But with AI entering the architectural realm, how will this tool reshape the way MBRDV approaches design? Will it enhance their creative process or make it dull and boring? This is a story of how one of the most avant-garde architecture firms in the world steps into the future with AI as their companion in design. Okay, so now architecture is always changing and evolving and the tools we could create our future buildings also change and evolve. So when a new technology like AI comes along and promises to be a super tool and enhance the architecture design, it's a no-brainer to accept it and use it to push architecture even further. But one of the first questions that arises with a new tool is almost always, why should we choose a new tool when our current one works perfectly? If you can't do it in the traditional way, you shouldn't do it through AI. So, so everything can be done in the traditional way, but AI simply increases the speed of it and makes it more efficient and faster. This is Freddy Fortek. He is an architect with a master's in building technology from TU Delft and AI specialist inside of MVRDV. So more or less, he has been at the center of this transformation of architecture and AI. So I, I really enjoyed that part where they push the boundaries. And this is what, what I'm doing here, trying to push the boundaries of applying AI to architecture here at MVRDV. AI is transforming the way we think about architecture design. It's not just about the automation of tasks, it's about enhancing our creative process. AI allows us to experiment at a pace and scale that was previously unimaginable. Uh, AI is, is not a magic wand, but it's a power tool. It just simply helps us uh, get results much faster. And each new tool throughout the years has brought something unique to the table, enhancing our ability to visualize and realize our designs. But with AI, we're not just looking at another logical step in this evolution, we're witnessing a leap. A long time ago, back in AutoCAD, I don't know how long it took you to make a photo with a realistic render and how much money. And then slowly, when V-Rate came in, okay, you can do a really nice render in about three days. Now with Enscape, you can do a nice render in one day. And now with Mitchery, you can do a nice render in maybe 30 minutes. Now, clearly for MVRDV, integrating AI into their design process was a step into uncharted territory. In order to fit a new tool into an extremely intricate architecture process, they would have to start the same way they start any of their designs, by design through research. I think about July of last year, I mean, the first whispers of an AI or Mid Journey version three was kind of going through the office. Like, what, what, what is that? What's going on? And then there was a lunch a meeting by, what, what, by a few of the nerds in the office <laughs> where we all sat together. We're like, okay, what are you doing with your interview? What have you done with it? And we're showing each other, we're sharing these images. And then what happens is since EmberDV is a studio-based office, so we have nine different studios within one EmberDV title, uh, we started sharing uh, this knowledge. So slowly uh, from the nerds, it kind of trickled down into the whole office until finally many people were uh, challenged to work with Mitchell. MVRDB's initial dive into AI wasn't a structured plan, but a series of organic, curiosity-driven explorations. 
It was about shaping knowledge, learning from each other, and collectively envisioning how AI could fit into their work. This group of people, we brainstormed a few studio sessions in which we then uh, grabbed smaller teams of maybe 20 people and then presented them how the journey works, how stable diffusion works, and then uh, give them a design challenge. So that's maybe an hour in total, 30 minutes, we give a little lecture. 15 minutes we give them to play around with themselves and then they have to present their thing. So I remember in version three of Midjourney, we were asking people to generate floor plans, sections, elevations, and renders of one fake project, which we made up, and then ask them to present it to each other. And then finally we had to vote on which had the most convincing design. <laughs> it was really great to, to see. So as MVRDB delved deeper into the world of AI, they began to uncover its potential and its limitations. This phase of exploration was crucial. It set the foundation for how AI would be integrated into their future projects. But integrating a technology as advanced and as nuanced as AI into the refined and intricate process of architecture design was not a straightforward path. It involved a steep learning curve to learn new software, technical hurdles, and the task of aligning AI's power tool capabilities with the firm's creative vision. What was extremely interesting for me was actually typing MVRDV. What does it mean if you ask somebody with different type of bias AI has integrated into it? What comes out? Well, colorful pixels was the answer. And then I thought to myself, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're about at all. Of course, another big problem was the rapid pace at which AI technology was evolving. I mean, just look, Midjourney launched in July of 2022, Stable Diffusion in August, and ChatGPT in November of that same year. And some results have gone from looking like this to now looking like this. AI is growing so fast. Like you're out for, for a month, you're working on something else, then you come back and you're, you're like, oh, wait, what did I miss? I used to be able to type this in and it used to work. This struggle was not just about technical adaptation, it was about a philosophical adaptation as well. I mean, how does a firm known for its meticulous, research-driven approach embrace a technology that is inherently experimental and unpredictable. Then you also see the limits of AI. AI couldn't just knock out uh, an MVRDV design uh, because it's missing all of that other stuff that we're talking about for the, the research, the cultural context, the local cost, the programmatic requirements. And it was through this exploration of trial and error that the office started using Midjourney and Stable Diffusion and testing to see how the initial stages of a project could be enhanced with AI tools. If the normal process would look something like this, where you can talk to the client, sketch some ideas out, pass it onto a CAD software, and start refining it from there, AI would start enhancing this process and playing a specific role in different parts. Many times, we use it in the first stages. We sit down, we talk to the clients, we go back home. We're like, okay, what, what do they want? And we just throw a few things in there, see what comes out, and maybe something that triggers us. But then as we go through the process, these things get refined and defined more, and we have to deal with things like the widths of doors and stuff, you know, which Midjourney doesn't take into account for stable diffusion. So we start to develop those. And then we reach a point in the design process where we have, let's say, a blue foam model, which then we try to reinstart into this Midjourney or stable diffusion, where we overlay different types of facades and kind of without too much effort, create a, a atmospheric image which relates well to the design which adheres to all of these architectural rules the floors the doors the walls the roof so through this constant testing and research they found that mid-journey and stable diffusion could not only be useful in the initial stages of the design like brainstorming and coming up with crazy ideas but also in the more technical processes. And then what is really fun is later in the process, it starts to play a role again. The moment that everything is defined, but we have to test uh, you know, 20 different types of uh, window opening sizes. And you just like rock it in, see what happens. Sometimes horrible things come out as you probably see now on screen, or sometimes beautiful things come out which uh, excite us and we're like, okay, now let's develop that further. This new look into using AI to design was also having an effect on the teams that worked in each project. So if before AI, a team of 10 people used their time and effort to create repetitive tasks like test window openings or facade materials, now they could dedicate their time to more creative parts of the design process that are more akin to what an architect is supposed to do 
and not what a robot or AI can do. Instead of having to lose people, super talented people, in the production workflow, we're able to use their brain power in a more uh, beneficial way for the process. So actually, efficiency just keeps increasing as we start to implement these tools. But of course, with every new technology, especially one as impactful as AI, comes a set of responsibilities and ethical considerations. As many of you know, many current AI models use information from all over the internet to generate images. So regardless of copyright, ownership of credit, anyone can create an original image and the ethical boundaries of creativity are ignored or blurred. Lots of these models now have been trained using web scraping throughout the whole internet and it takes absolutely all images whether they're copyright or not so i do think that the proper way of advancing in the future is knowing where the data and the data sets are coming from and, and being able to use models that use these uh these data sets at mbrdv we are using only images that are property of MVRDV to train the neural models that generate the design process. Now, the advantage of creating their own models is that it becomes a sort of personalized AI tool that can understand the office's perspective, mission, and principles, which is something we will see much more of in the future, I think, where each architecture office has a group of really creative employees, but also has a set of distinguished AI language models that will separate them from the others. So the, the one thing I'm really worried about is that it's gonna become a cheap trick that people apply. It doesn't take too much effort to just type in great design, beautiful, atmospheric, light, vegetation, and then apply it onto just some random shape. So if people start misusing and abusing, then we're, we're gonna start getting posts on Instagram where it's like render versus reality. And you just see these really beautiful, over-the-top jungle interiors or, or jungle buildings floating with one little column in the middle. And then the reality is completely the opposite. But then when I'm hearing myself say this, I think to myself, you know, this probably won't happen. I only see a positive influence for the world. So as MVRDV's journey with AI progressed, they reached a pivotal point of integration. This was the moment when AI ceased to be an external novel tool and became an intrinsic part of their design process. We have three main branches that we started to use. Brainstorming, customization, research, and AI renderings. Talking about mid-journey, everyone's been using it and uh, been using it more for this type of brainstorming at the initial stages where you get interesting images. Then there's the prompt styles in Stable Diffusion, and, and, and there we really start typing our own specific prompts that we start uh, to use more often and give us more results that are uh, closer to what we want. Also, tools like Stable Diffusion allow you to grab your existing handmade models and start testing facade options or volumetric changes. We were able to use these blue foam models. We were with a very small team. Apply a really quick facade on them and throw them into a mid-journey with just a few keywords. We're able to knock out beautiful images, which really excited the client to a point that we were able to continue with the project. The next step would be embeddings. It's also trying to, to teach the model what type of graphical uh, styles or, or concepts that, uh, that we would like to uh, get from the model. And, uh, and finally, the most interesting one is uh, LoRa training and the most complex one that we actually teach it uh, no concept. Okay, so think of LoRa training like customizing your favorite video game character. You have a character that's already designed. That's the pre-trained AI model. But you want to make some changes to make it more you, like adjusting the, its hairstyle or outfit but not completely redesigning it from scratch. LoRa Training does something similar with AI models. It, it takes an existing AI model and makes small specific changes to it. This is way more efficient than creating a new character every time you want a different look. It's like fine tuning the model to do exactly what you need, like teaching it to recognize certain architecture styles or to create music in a particular genre without having to rebuild the whole model. What we tried just recently and it worked out pretty well is teaching Stable Diffusion how to generate the valley. So the, the project, the valley that we, we worked on, we fielded some images, tell the Stable Diffusion model, this is what the valley looks like. And when we use the LoRa, it will give us results as of the valley. And then the third branch in which MVRDB is using AI is for architectural rendering where they use stable diffusion along with an additional model called ControlNet to precisely modify the renderings, add materials, and change style. So ControlNet, what it does is it frees the geometry. And once you have uh, ControlNet set up, it will 
follow as closely as possible to the, the prompt that you give us, but there will always be surprises. It's not a static result where in, in, in Netscape or in Lumion you really specify this is this material. This. You, you have to be kind of open to a cer certain degree of surprise, but that also means that you can get inspired by it. So we worked in a collage-based manner, having very quick and dirty collages where the project leader would share with me about these collages and then we would with a very low denoising strength denoising strength is, is the, the other creativity that the model has we reduce the denoising strength but then it makes the collage keep the general view of what we want to see but then really improve graphically or change the style to something more like for example studio gameplay or something or cartoony or so that the, the client would, would like the, the images rather than doing it the traditional way. So what was at the beginning a tool for exploration that was merely explored and talked about is slowly becoming a structural part of the design process in MVRDB. And the best part is that the creative design through research process that they are known for is not being interrupted, but augmented and improved. And as a matter of fact, they're already trying to see what a more integrated AI future would look like for an architecture office. But I am really excited about the next steps, what's gonna happen with the AI. For example, imagine an AI integrated BIM software where you can just type in to Revit, hey, all the, the walls in the bathrooms of the more expensive apartments, uh, give them this layer and then it just does it. So once again, it's all about removing the tedious part of the work and uh, really making it, giving people more time to design and uh, research. Now in this new normal, AI is redefining the limits of what's possible in architecture. It's not just about generating quick renders or creating visually stunning designs. It's about using AI to explore new ideas, to push the boundaries of creativity, and to see projects from angles previously unimagined. I see that because we start to have this conversational chat type design approach, AI could actually help us rehumanize the design process. We start to see the images or see our architecture from the user's perspective. And because of that, we could not, we not only have to focus on the technical criteria, but we can also see it from the user point of view because we have the ability now to, to see how it would look like almost instantly. It, it doesn't mean you can generate your building in one second and that we lose our jobs. It actually just means that we can do more things and more fun things in a shorter time span, leading to more exciting designs. So I'm 100% pro AI integration into architecture. As we look into the future, it's clear, clear that AI will continue to play a pivotal role in shaping the world of architecture driving innovation, efficiency, and above all, inspiring new ways to imagine and create the spaces around us. Our office's design ethic and ethos and the thought process is so based in this research approach to design. AI merely is just like a tool that you use to enhance your, your process. So I want to thank Kaz and Freddie for helping me create this video. I love seeing how offices like MVRDV are pushing the boundaries and redefining what it means to be an architect and what it means to be innovative. If you would like to know more about MVRDV, there will be a link to their website down below. And also, if you want us to talk more about AI and how to use it as architects, let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.